Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss on YouTube. Here at Mental Floss, we've got a growing collection of slang dictionaries. So today I'm going to share with you some old school slang, like how a wet sock means a limp handshake. The goal here, of course, is to bring some of these awesome slang terms back into style. So let's get started. Happy cabbage is a sizable amount of money to be spent on self-satisfying things. You know, like cabbage. This was the old days. Hangwangle is to live or go along cheerfully in spite of minor misfortunes. Like Mickey Mouse, who goes on cheerfully despite having a dog who's a friend and also a dog who's a dog. And also come to think of it, Thor, who goes on despite having Loki as a brother. And Yoda, who goes on despite Luke Skywalker's incessant whining. In the ketchup means in the red or operating at a deficit. Flub the dub means to evade one's duty. No, duty. A pine overcoat is a coffin. A butter and egg man has nothing to do with breakfast preferences. It's actually, according to one dictionary, a wealthy but unsophisticated small town businessman who acts like a playboy when he visits the big city. Zib is a nincompoop. To give someone the wind is to jilt a suitor, which nowadays we call the rose ceremony at The Bachelor. The 1909 book Passing English of the Victorian Era, a dictionary of heterodox English slang and phrase, captured some great phrases that were falling out of favor even back then. For instance, they called sausages bags o mystery, which they are. Meredith, what kind of sausages? Pork sausages? Yep, another quarter for the staff pork chop party fund. Pop a mouse meant to get a black eye, not to be confused with the terrifying cock a mouse from How I Met Your Mother. Don't sell me a dog was a fancy way of saying don't lie to me. A door knocker was a type of beard, quote, shaved leaving hair under the chin and upon each side of the mouth forming with mustache something like a door knocker. Damn hipsters. A bald head was called a fly rink. A giggle mug was a habitually smiling face, whereas of course a giggle mug shot is a picture of Robert Downey Jr. after he got arrested. A nose bagger was, quote, someone who takes a day trip to the beach. He brings his own provisions and doesn't contribute at all to the resort he's visiting. If something or someone was not up to dick, it was not healthy. Take the egg means to win. I guess this was back in the days before, like, trophies? Although, come to think of it, an egg might be better than a dundee. Whooper-ups were, quote, inferior, noisy singers. I'm looking at you, William Hung, and also you, me. A rain napper was an umbrella, and your mouth was your sauce box. Context is everything. All right, I gotta keep my sauce box moving. Here's a multi-purpose bit of slang. According to the 1967 Dictionary of American Slang, pretzel bender can mean a peculiar person, a player of the French horn, a wrestler, or a heavy drinker. You add all of those meanings of pretzel benders together, and you have Meredith's future husband. Am I right, Meredith? Yeah, I'm right. So what happens when a pretzel bender drinks too much? Well, we get to use some of our old slang terms for being drunk, like having your flag out, or being soapy-eyed, or full as a tick, or seeing snakes, or canned up, or zozzled. We enjoy the occasional zozzling. That's why we keep tequila on the wall of magic. Or you could be owled, or striped, or squiffed, or swacked. Moving on to old phrases to describe excessive heat, and they needed a lot of them in the days before air conditioning, hotter than Dutch love in harvest. You also frequently heard the bear got him, the bear in this case, was heat stroke, full of moist, and don't get mad at me for saying the word moist, internet, it's just a word. All words are created equal. Moist is just, it's a beautiful word. Moist. I'm gonna say it one more time. Moist. And finally, lest you think that our ancestors never worked blue, we have hot as a half fox in a forest fire. Do we have a half fox up on the wall here? No? No? There's Linus. Fat lot of good he does us. Then we have the opposite ways to describe the freezing cold. It gives a body the flesh creep, or as we know it, the shivers. It could be colder than the hinges of hell, or colder than a brass toilet seat in the Yukon. And lastly, so cold that the milk cows gave icicles, which I'm pretty sure is scientifically impossible. The 19th century Australians had some phrases we may want to adopt, like to have one's shirt out means to be angry. Similarly, someone who's acting crazy is off his caduva, or off his chump, to hump the sweat means not what you think it means, but to carry your luggage on your back. Happy returns describes vomiting, despite those returns being, at least in my experience, less than happy. And someone who's tipsy could be called a lean away. There's also some specific beatnik slang, like off the cob means corny, and food related, red onion is another name for a dive bar. To focus your audio means to listen carefully. Pause sharp means being well informed on a variety of topics, you know, like someone, for instance, who's able to host a list show about a wide variety of 
of topics from children's television to hoaxes to slang words. But if you know too much, particularly of the kind of information that could lead you to ratting someone out, you might have bright disease. Often fatal, at least in the Mafia. Moving on from beatnik slang, there are actually a lot of old school ways to call someone a rat, like blobber, cabbage hat, pigeon, viper, telegram. There are also, of course, many interesting words for the male and female anatomy, like for guys, we have Master John Goodfellow, Gentleman Usher, the Staff of Life, the Cyprian Scepter, the Maypole, among many others. And for females, we have the Phoenix Nest, the Netherlands, Mount Pleasant, Mrs. Fubbs's Parlor. I'm sure there are others, but now that you have Mrs. Fubbs, his parlor, do you really need others? Anyway, bring these things together, and at least according to the 1811 version of the Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue, you get amorous congress, basket making, blanket, hornpipe, or convivial society. And if you were caught cheating on your significant other a century ago, you could be accused of carrying tackle, being on a left-handed honeymoon, or in Shakespeare's time, groping for trout in a peculiar river. Enough about sex, let's talk about stuff that really matters. Food. Cluck and grunt means ham and eggs. Chicks on a raft is eggs on toast. Bloodhound in the hay means hot dog with sauerkraut. And frog sticks means french fries. Hounds on an island is frank and beans. Any kind of meat served rare is on the hoof. A pair of drawers meant two cups of coffee. And Adam's ale, city juice, and dog soup are all less short ways of saying water. And lastly, we return to my salon so that I can tell you that a George Eddy is a customer who doesn't tip well. And this former restaurant server would just like to tell you, don't be a George Eddy. Thanks for watching Mental Floss here on YouTube, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. Every week, we endeavor to answer one of your mind-blowing questions. This week's question comes from Emily Kotnick, who asks, why do you hear your own voice differently than everyone else? This is actually a question that Mental Floss has answered before, so you can find that in the description. But basically, sounds are captured by our outer ear and then strike the eardrum, which vibrates and sends the vibrations to the inner ear, which translates them into signals that the auditory nerve can like understand and then send to the brain. But when we speak, the inner ear is picking up eardrum vibrations in addition to vibrations from inside your body. So like it's a combination of all those vibrations that makes the sound of your own voice. It makes it very like mellifluous generally. But then when other people hear it, it sounds less full than you know it to secretly be. Anyway, if you have a question that you'd like answered, please leave it below in comments. We'll try to answer as many as we can. Thank you again for watching. And as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.